If you're in drag and you're trying to not attract attention, or if you're trying to be like, oh, I don't really do the politic thing, all that, you know, you might be in the wrong business. Oh, oh stunning. Yes. Oh, you look like a princess. Got anything sluttier? Willem, how does it feel to be the first drag performer to be nominated for an Emmy in the acting category? It's nice and everything, but Rue's done everything before me, and like, you can't say that she doesn't act on RuPaul's Drag Race. I mean, she acts like she knows most of the girls or likes them or can tolerate them. That's acting, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I'm happy about it, but also it's like, it's all been done. I'm just, I'm happy someone's paying attention. Tell me about this role in Eastsiders and how it's different from other roles you've played in that in the past. Eastsiders came to me uh, through Kit Williamson, the creator, the Emmy nominated creator. Uh, Douglas is basically me minus any work ethic, drive, or success. Get dressed. I need at least two hours to get ready. Well, you have 15 minutes. If you can't handle me at my worst, you don't deserve me at your brunch. It was very easy to play her. It's just, I, I never tried to make her good. I never tried to make her bad. I just tried to do what was on the paper. And I understand her a lot because drag is rough. <laughs> Ah, damn it! Ah! I thought that was gonna work. This is why I don't do day drag. Well, what is this, recreational cross-dressing? I'm calling the number on the back of his van and telling them he's a homotransphobic What do you think this means for the queer community um, as a whole? I don't know what it necessarily means. I know that um, Eastsiders started out as a, like, a web show, and then by season two, it was on Logo. Season three, it was on Netflix. Season four, it's like Emmy nominated. I think it's it's just a testament of LGBTQIA people always knowing like they need to make their own breaks, stop waiting around for people. How are you going to change your life? What does that mean? I don't know, but I've done it before and I can do it again. I can become whoever I'm supposed to be. Every time you turn around, there's another attack from this administration on our community. And I just want to know for you as someone who's been so outspoken um, in that fight, how do we keep going? I've never really met a drag queen who gets shyer when she puts on a wig, unless she's got a deep voice and she's mm -hmm. trying to look, um, anyway. But, so like, it's one of those things where like, if you're in drag and you're trying to not attract attention, or if you're trying to be like, oh, I don't really do the politic thing, all that, you know, you might be in the wrong business because you're gonna get the attention one way or another. So I think it's in your best bet to educate yourself and to try to like, you know, figure out uh, where you should be sitting and standing on issues. Most of these issues were caused uh, because uh, white people are terrible and I'm a white person. So since white people created the problem, we should be the ones mainly dismantling it. So I feel like um, I can like stop promoting my YouTube channel and try to get on the right side of history with all this. But I'm still doing you. I'm just not promoting them. They're coming out. <laughs> They've been through a week since like, 2018, I think. Along with Race Chaser, we've never missed a week in the podcast, ever, in like two years. Literally, how do you juggle all this stuff? Well, if I don't do it, who would? Like, nobody's gonna do it for me. Nobody's gonna be like, Willem, come on, do this. Do you know how many performers aren't working? When I take off my high heels, I literally look at my feet and say, thank you, feet, thank you, feet. You got me through this gig. You held me up. You didn't fall. Like, I thank my body for holding up and like, I'm really grateful for um, the shit shack that my brain is living in and performing in. Oh no! What is really going on with you, girl? You're being a way bigger bitch than usual. Thank you! I legitimately like need to know for myself, like where does that work ethic come from? From the age of 17 in my journal, I would write down every day one thing I did for my career, even if it was like mailing off an envelope or a headshot. And I always try to do at least one thing for my career um, a day in my head because I never thought I'd be able to have a career doing what I'm doing now. Who even knew I could get paid to do this? So like I've just been taking the jobs as they come, saying yes to everything and this and rolling over and networking, trying to do everything that I could to make it snowball into a career and hope that one day that would happen. And it kind of did, I feel like. Now I'm getting there a little bit. <laughs> so that's nice. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching this episode of I Have a Question. Talking to people is like literally one of the best parts of my job and I'm so glad I get to share it with you. And also thanks for sticking around to hear me babble at the end of every video. If you wanna see more, be sure to like click over here and also like and subscribe down below. Do it.